This is a PCSM. It's, it, it, it stands for a Phil Callahan soil meter. This is based off a Barrington meter. They use in geology to measure magnetic potentiality or whether a material has magnetic susceptibility. So it's a way of testing soil. So Phil Callahan, he's written quite a few books. He was an entomologist um, uh, from Texas, and uh, he uh, was always intrigued uh, going around the world because he was a big proponent of the, using... Uh, Anyway, so you can test your soil. You can test product that you may want to purchase to put on your land. But uh, we'll just give a, uh, an example here of zero. This is uh, silica beads. So it's just piezoelectric quartz there. That's it. So there's no other elements there, just the quartz. And then when we put it in, we notice we get no reading, right? So that shows us that that is diamagnetic. It doesn't have magnetic potential. Sometimes Wait. if you... Go ahead. Hold on, sorry. I'm going to start again. To measure magnetic potentiality or whether a material has magnetic susceptibility. So it's a way of testing soil. So Phil Callahan, he's written quite a few books. He was an entomologist um, uh, from Texas, and uh, he uh, was always intrigued uh, going around the world because he was a big proponent of the, using uh, the stone flowers as well. And uh, Anyway, so you can test your soil, or you can test product that you may want to purchase to put on your land. But uh, we'll just give a, an example here of zero. This is uh, silica beads, so it's just piezoelectric quartz there. That's it. So there's no other elements there, just the quartz. And when we put it in, we notice we get no reading, right? So that shows us that that is diamagnetic. It doesn't have magnetic potential. Sometimes Wait. if you... Go ahead. Hold on, sorry. I'm going to start again. Uh, can you reset it to zero, just so that we... Oh, yeah. Okay. So this machine can go negative or positive. So we'll get it down to zero, 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 not negative zero. And you got to watch when you're using this meter, too, uh, not to have it on a metal surface, because that'll change your readings. So we've got it on the tailgate with the plastic and a little bit of wood, just to give it a ground, so to speak. So, yeah, again, we put it in, and we see we don't get a reading. So now we'll put in a little bit of the andesite sand that we were sitting on earlier when we were talking up the hill. And we go in there and we've got 725. So he, he, he from going around the world, he found that where there was good rock dust or good soils, you were in the 70 to a 100 reading. Well, this is 720. So... You start adding this into your soil, you can start to build up that magnetic potentiality very quickly. And because they're aggregates, and when it's in a sand or an aggregate form, it won't take a long time for that to dis disappear, uh, where powder gets used immediately. So that's with the rock dust, too. You got to think about immediate food and then food for later in the season. So here's another, here's some of the green stone that we were looking at earlier. This down to zero again, and we put that one in there, and that's running at 546. We got the Ramarock, which is my deluxe mix. It's, it's like 30 different stones or different deposits, and we put it in there. It's running 230. So we got to remember about some of these rock powders too. Uh, the old adage, more isn't better. It's better to slowly introduce it because your magnetism, if you do it too strong, will put everything on pause. So plants will start off a little slower, but then they gain momentum and catch up. But uh, I, uh, I also, when think about <clears throat> magnetism, it stores infrared. So we know the sun is sending infrared rays to the planet. So when you have this magnetic potential, it stores that infrared heat for longer, so that will keep your soils warmer longer and allow them to warm up sooner. So that's what we've seen through the ages. And what I saw too with using minerals is when you get a hedge, a lot of time people have a hedge on the driveway. When the spring comes, it slowly lifts, leafs out. When you use the minerals, you'll see simultaneous leafing because it's a pattern. Here's some some shale from the farm. It's got a little a little bit of a reading. So even though it's a shale, it still has some ma magnetic potentiality there. And uh, the rocks store in their memory 
where the magnetic declination was at the time of the rock was formed. So they use that in geology to determine the age of, of different deposits around the world. Canada, you know, for, is fortunate we are on the Precambrian, which Precambrian is before England and Ireland and Scotland and Wales rose out of the ocean. That's the Cambrian era. We are Precambrian. So consider like Canadian resources as some of the grandparent stones of the planet. And, you know, we all know about our grandparents, how they can be very healing for us to be in their company and they can tutor us because the they're, they're outside the influence of the family circle to some degree. And down here, this, this is another the little deluxe mix there. So This one has a lot more calcium in it, so the reading isn't as high, 170. But uh, the calciums and, and the potassiums that are in there will give you <coughs> an accelerated leafing and, and also high-quality leafing. A lot of people don't realize, too, some of these... Uh, these different deposits are sources of night-grade mineral oils. Basalt, uh, they get uh, night-grade machine oil, confectionery oil. Uh, WD-40 is from basalt, um, you know, the lubricant. So, so think of some of these stones of stored oil in their molecular structure, and when the bacteria eat the nutrient, it releases the oil. So now we get uh, waxes forming in leaves, which allow trees in the city to to disperse polluted water off their leaf, not stain it. We see a lot in the city where the leaves get stained before the fall. They have all these black spots, and that has a lot to do with what is going on or not going on in the soil. So yeah, so and and this all ties into your bricks. Uh, people with the bricks, uh, bricks is uh, it's been used forever in the canning industry. <clears throat> so when you want to. Uh, if you want to store peaches, if you don't have your sugar high enough, those peaches will mold out in the tin. So they know to add a certain amount of sugar when you're going to can stuff, whether it preserves and stuff, right? And what do we know about sugar? Sugar is a preservative also, right? And, uh, you know, sugar creates... Uh, uh, when a bug, a bug eats sugar, it turns into alcohol and melts the bug. So when you get healthy ecosystems... There was components in the leaf, in the foliage that is a natural bug deterrent. You may still get attacked, but they won't devastate because you're wiping out uh, the very thing they're eating is actually hurting them. But they're they're just programmed to eat, 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 right? And uh, yeah, so so it's a way of just controlling some of the bad bugs. Ants love uh, sugar too, so uh, you know a lot of people in the city got problem with ants always invading their house. All you got to do is uh, you know. Dig a little bit of a hole in the backyard and pour some sugar in there. And now you've got a little uh, candy store that they will go to rather than come in your house searching for food. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. but yeah, so, so the bricks yeah, measures the sugar index and the, the sugar is carbon. So that's an indication of how much nutrients are transporting from the ground into the plants themselves. So, uh, you know, the sweeter the food is, because a lot of times calcium will make your your food sweet too, not just sugar, but it brings the sugar levels up as well. And that's more sedating to us. Uh, you know, it's interesting, I notice with a lot of uh, the health food movement, there's a lot more uh, uh, focus on dessert than, than the actual meal. And when we don't get the right proteins, the, we, will, we will be drawn to go for sugary things. It's quick energy, but it has no staying power. And, and, and then we know you overdose, it can cause blood disorders, right? And, uh, yeah. and uh, stuff, yeah. So um, I do have a question. Yeah. What does that do in terms of soil quality? Well, your magnetism, you know, uh, with, it, with its ability to store infrared, so it gets warm during the day, and after the sun sets, it goes, whew, I made it through the day, and you get a little humidity forming on the stone. Years ago, when I was first walking my property where the deposits are, the other deposits, um, there were some spots out in the fields that there's some stones there and water was always trickling. So when you move the stones, the water stopped. And you put the stones back and the water comes back again. So it, it, it entices the water, hey, come on over here. And, and, uh, and also with that humidity factor at night, even though it's dry, the ground, there's humidification going on from all the CO2 release of the forest, right? Or your landscape in general. And so how do we capture that humidity that's taken off? Or hold it local and keep it fresh. 
So you're not getting into powdery mail doing, even though it's damp. You're, you're, you're staying fresh, right? And a lot of people, you know, with mold problems and stuff in crops, is, is this, it's a so sign of the soil conditions aren't so good. So you got a lot of problems, whether it's the farmer has to dry down the grain because it'll rot in storage, or, uh, you know, through that drying down, you lose nutritional quality. Uh, you know, the good farmers always would feed more whole grain to your uh, animals than cracked grain because you lose a lot of nutrients when you crack the, the uh, endosperm, right? Think of the endosperm as like a protective layer. And when it gets wet for long enough, then the sprout shoots out, right? And they say when a sprout walks out, it's like equivalent to a, an atomic bomb going off, but it's implosion rather than explosion. So we've done a lot of blowing up rather than creating. Like go to the center and then radiate out. It's like our cells, where it's beating. It's telling your body to beat that little heart in you, right? Which is related to the sun on one level, right? Mm, thanks. You know, you don't have to eat as much to get your shot of vitamin C. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, orange juices these days, you see calcium added, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do juices, I, you know, I recommend to everyone not from concentrate. Because the concentra concentrated stuff is hard for the body to digest. You're getting quenched with the flavor, and it's a liquid, but your body's saying, I'm having a hard time comprehending what you just gave me. So why don't you just pee it out and sweat it out and we'll talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> and you're always paying catch-up if you're not, you know, nutritionally aware. And, uh, yeah, so the only problem, the only downside with all this is your, your wildlife is going to tune in to that there's better quality there. So you have to be, this is where raised beds are good because you can control some of the animals from foraging on your garden plot when you're not there. And, and also <clears throat> makes your uh, harvesting and planting a little easier. You're standing up as opposed to bending over. Especially when we get on at our age, you're going to be down on your knees for a while. It can be a challenge to get back up. Right? But if you're standing up already, it's not, it's not the same. And you can control the soils. And so you want to grow pumpkins or you want to grow celery or carrots. You know, you have to adapt the soil terrain for them. You know, and, and we used to see, like, you know, through the years, I saw farmers, you know, with humongous uh, uh, dacons and, 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 and uh, even radishes, you know, you get radishes like small baseballs, like the small hardball, right, as opposed to just a dot. And, uh, you know, that's all. Now, now you're getting more yield off that little space. So, you know, right now farming is all about making the fields bigger, 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 rather than let's condense them a little, put up a, a swale in there with a, some forest to regulate the water table and then also create some organic matter when the season goes to sleep and the leaves blow across your field and get pre-digested by the winter. And, uh, and again, you throw minerals down. I like to throw the minerals in the forest uh, in the spring as it's just waking up. So you've got all that leaf mulch from last year. So then when you throw the mineral and it rains, it starts to percolate through the leaves, stimulates the fungi and the mycorrhiza and all the actinomyces that pre-digest all the cellulose in a leaf and turn it into organic matter. And people don't realize leaves, too, are full of soap, saponins, right? So, you know, there's cleansing qualities to a forest dropping its own leaves and giving itself a little spring bath and a fall wash. So what happens when you remineralize a forest? Well, you see accelerated uh, canopy in going on, like, you know, much more foliage above which now allows the sun from overcooking the soil because you're shading the sun's rays. But the photosynthesis is being reacted by the, by the leaf uh, uh, pattern itself. It's absorbing that light. And then that's creating biomass below, you know, that has above so below expression. Like, you know, if you carefully pull a tree out, what you see above, you're going to see in a root pattern below. Or when you see a tree that doesn't grow uniformly, Usually it's run into some type of obstruction. Obstruction is the root system wanted to develop over there. It wasn't friendly. So it said, okay, I'm going to just divert and I'm going to take the other lane tonight and uh, rather than struggle to try and get through there. But when, when, we, when we start to use the minerals, there's energetic patterns here because all the platonic solids are in the rock kingdom if you use the right rocks. So the, that's known in, in uh, you know, modern-day alchemy as you know, foundational to all life 
is, is fortified and nourished by that principle. Even the planet itself, you look at the center of the planet, it's a dodeca, dodecahedron, right, which is a, a soccer ball blown up, and, uh, and, then, uh, and then it ripples out and becomes other things and shapes. And, you know, some minerals are striated, some are diamond patterned, you know, some are hexagonal patterned, some are straight lines, uh, some are blocks. So this all starts to create, if you look at all those shapes and you throw it in a jar, you can see where soil aggregation comes from. So that soil now is breathing. It allows absorption and allows gases to leave. And when it dries up, it starts to clump up. It doesn't become hard pan, which we see a lot in chemical fertilizer. The soil collapses because we the chemicals have burned all the, the living matter out of the profile. And so we lose our water holding capacity and nutrient uh, um, exchange. Here again, carbon's a key. Carbon is the magical matrix. So um, you want to put as much carbon as you can into the soil. Well, you want to have make sure you have a healthy carbon, yeah, and uh, you know you've got to have again the minerals in there as well for 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 different uh, for different reactions. You know some of the rocks that we were talking uh, olivine earlier. Uh, olivine is a magnesium crystal uh, it's just been Nassau's just discovered that uh, that it, it, it uh, absorbs uh, co2 right so we can use it for some type of sequestering of co2 so you know let's help the forest to digest more of the man-made stuff we've done and then clean up our act on how much we start to dump out in the atmosphere again right we're gonna have to like uh, you know what, we all want to move to space on a space station? Like, we've got this paradise here that we've kind of messed up. And we just need to get back, man. There's natural law we need to honor more rather than manipulate, right? And that's one of the things I love about all this tech is you, you're actually working with nature. You're not trying to dominate it. You're mimicking it. And you're trying to create ideal situations for that manifestation. And uh, you know, your plants all show you that, you know. You can go to some areas and you only want a certain color flower, only a certain type of flower. Usually it's a, a sign of mono, mono geology. And uh, people don't realize fireworks are all made from ground up rock, right? And, uh, you know, you get the, you know, the dandelion tuft when it blows up, you know, or you get the, the, the uh, daisy flower showing up. Uh, so it's esters and asters, right? And they all have uh, you know, contributions to the big picture. And Alan, when you, just looking at the... And uh, olivine earlier, uh, olivine is a magnesium crystal. Uh, it's just been, Nassau's just discovered that uh, that it, it, it uh, absorbs uh, CO2, right? So we can use it for some type of sequestering of CO2. So, you know, it's helped the forest to digest more of the man-made stuff we've done and then clean up our act on how much we start to dump out in the atmosphere again, right? We're going to have to, like, uh, you know, what, we all want to move to space on a space station? Like, we've got this paradise here that we've kind of messed up. And we just need to get back, man. There's natural law we need to honor more rather than manipulate, right? And that's one of the things I love about all this tech is you, you're actually working with nature. You're not trying to dominate it. You're mimicking it. And you're trying to create ideal situations for that manifestation. And, uh, you know, your plants all show you that. You can go to some areas and you only want a certain color flower, only a certain type of flower. Usually it's a, a sign of mono, mono geology. And uh, people don't realize fireworks are all made from ground up rock, right? And, uh, you know, you get the, you know, the dandelion tuft when it blows up, you know, or you get the, the, the uh, daisy flower showing up. Uh, so it's esters and asters, right? And they all have uh, uh, contributions to the big picture. And Alan, when you just looking at the the the, the magnet paramagnetic qualities, yeah. What does that do in terms of soil quality? Well, your magnetism, you know, uh, with it, with its ability to store infrared, so it gets warm during the day, and after the sun sets, it goes. Whew, I made it through the day, and you get a little humidity forming on the stone. Years ago, when I was first walking my property where the deposits are, the other deposits, um, there were some spots out in the fields that there were some stones there, and water was always trickling. So when you moved the stones, the water stopped. When you put the stones back, 
and the water comes back again. So it, it, it entices the water, hey, come on over here. And, and, uh, and also with that humidity factor at night, even though it's dry, the ground, there's humidification going on from all the CO2 release of the forest, right? Or your landscape in general. And so how do we capture that humidity that's taken off or hold it local and keep it fresh? So you're not getting into powdery mail doing it, even though it's damp. You're, you're, you're staying fresh, right? A lot of people, you know, with mold problems and stuff in crops, is, is the, it's a so sign of the soil conditions aren't so good. So you got a lot of problems, whether it's the farmer has to dry down the grain because it'll rot in storage, or, uh, you know, through that drying down, you lose nutritional quality. Uh, you know, the good farmers always would feed more whole grain to your uh, animals than cracked grain because you lose a lot of nutrients when you crack the, the uh, endosperm, right? Think of the endosperm as like a protective layer. And when it gets wet for long enough, then the sprout shoots out, right? And they say when a sprout walks out, it's like equivalent to a, an atomic bomb going off, but it's implosion rather than explosion. So we've done a lot of blowing up rather than creating. Like go to the center and then radiate out. So it's like our cells, so it's beating it's telling your body to beat that little heart in you, right? Which is related to the sun on one level, right? Okay. No, thanks. Okay, well, what else do you so, so uh, understanding some of the qualities of these different uh, deposits, because I, I, I'm, uh, I'm collecting some materials from very pristine deposits that have been used for... Uh, in the electronics industry, uh, making of microscopic lenses, shielding capacities, uh, able to absorb radiation. So I, I developed two uh, paint additives, one I call uh, sacred base, which is uh, a carbon from outer space with the basalt and the andesite, all, all in a flower. So you add this into a primer or your first coat of paint. But because of the carbon being black, it will change your color. So that's why we say, Primer first, or split your paint up and put half this in one first coat and then use your luminous space, which uh, we'll just measure that. Uh, so it's measuring uh, 277. So think of um, your paint as a skin of the room. So now we're potentializing the skin of the room to have some piezoelectric, paramagnetic, pyroelectric properties and photo optic qualities. So the rooms become larger than life. The rooms are, are uh, s sending standing waves, U waves, and um, formative waves that allow you to, de to start to defy gravity because you're being guided by the wall's energy uh, radiating out. And, uh, and then this one is a mix of the quartz with a moonstone, a little zeolite, little diatoms, and, uh, and some of the basalt. So it, it's... Uh, it's not as high on uh, CGS, but we don't want it. We want this a lot hot, in a sense, energetic. And we want this more as a guide. So now we're making a microchip. Same principles, right? To make the very phone, that circuit board of that phone is using these principles right here. So it's a way of just uh, allowing the, the rooms to vibrate more earth harmonics of, of high quality. Like when you go to the cottage, I always say to people, not everybody can go to the country, but we can bring the country to the city. And, uh, and that's uh, with the minerals too, when you use them and you water the air, it freshens the air. And a lot of the nutrients that are in here, some of these rare earth elements have, some of them up to O24 attached to the nutritional makeup of the stone, whether it's potassium or calcium. So when the nutrients are absorbed by the living matter, it releases the oxygen, hence the freshening of the environment. And another thing I didn't mention is I use seaweeds and I use some uh, bentonite clays in my mixes. A lot of soils are, are lacking the bentonite clay, which is a colloid. And a colloid, again, is the, the, the consider the colloid uh, as the saliva of the planet, the, the nutrient juice of the planet. And uh, what happens for us as we get age on, our, and with all the salt fertilizers, it'll dry up the mucosa in your intestinal lining and then you start to experience uh, absorption issues of the food you're eating and not absorbing it anymore, or, or you get uh, 
colitis, twisted bowel, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, you know, hernia, stuff like this. These are all things that happen in the farm world too, like an animal sitting in barn when the nutrition's not there, not just us. In the 50s, they got rid of diabetes in cows by supplementing a little bit of nickel into their ration. I mean, we always hear negative about nickel, right? right. Nickel's very, very, very magnetic too, right? And uh, so, but a little bit, again, little bits, right? And with the amounts that are in here, even if you do heavy applications, you're not getting into a, a toxic zone. But that's where we use the bentonites and the zeolites, again, in the carbon. The, it, it deodorizes those heavy metals that are harm way, harm's way and gases, controls gases. So you get freshness as opposed to pollution or funky smell. Like right now, we're all driving around. You can smell they've, they've done the, the cut of hay, so now they're raw fertilizing out there. A lot of guys dropping the manure. So each manure has a smell, right? And uh, the old farmers used to all have all the animals on the farm because all their bacteria and their excrement build soil bacteria. But when you overload, like I noticed, like, you know, I'm eat pretty organic. I, I noticed like uh, artesian acres spelts growing out west. When you're cooking it, there's a point when you'll smell the manure come out of the, the cook, uh, of, of the cooking process, right? And uh, sometimes it's uh, cow manure. Uh, I noticed when you eat the spelt, you, the next day you, you shat like a cow. You, you don't have a turd anymore. You have a just sort of liquid mess. And, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, the, the horses and the ruminants are all B vitamins. Uh, well, horses aspergillus to really grow mushrooms. Horse shit is the, the best one to use. It will grow in a cow, but it, it, it's, it's too strong. And uh, and then you got bat. bat. Bat manure has the most nitrogen of all of them, but it's early application. You don't want to do it late <clears throat> late in the, in, in the growth cycle because then it's sort of tainting your vegetable with too much nitrate. Uh, you know, calcium nitrate gunpowder. And there's certain rocks that have it. Like the cave rock's got a little calcium nitrate in it. When you rub it and you smell, it smells just after you shot a shotgun on a spent shell. And that's, that's nitrate, right? And, uh, and nitrate uh, makes things grow, but it'll lock in your blood at the same time. So you're dissolving internally. The sugar is carbon, so that's an indication of how much nutrients are transporting from the ground into the plants themselves. So, uh, you know, the sweeter the food is, because a lot of times calcium will make your, your food sweet too, not just sugar, but it brings the sugar levels up as well. And that's more sedating to us. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I notice with a lot of uh, the health food movement, there's a lot more uh, uh, focus on dessert than, than the actual meal. And when we don't get the right proteins, uh, we, will, we will be drawn to go for sugary things. It's quick energy, but it has no staying power. And, and, and we know you overdose, it can cause blood disorders, right? And, uh, and uh, stuff. Yeah. So. Oh, um, I do have a question. Yeah. So when you do the BRICS counts of the produce to see the results from your from remineralization, is there a place, so let's say you have cherries, and let's say, for example, I'm just pulling a number out of my, like, out of the air. Let's say you have a 400 bricks count on your cherries. Um, is there a place that somebody could go and see what's the average bricks count for uh, cherries? The Cattle Food Guide has a bricks level. So they've, they've, uh, the, they've uh, the numbers, 400 is way out there. It doesn't go that high. But, uh, um, you know... Uh, I, I remember one time years ago paying $25 for an organic watermelon, and it was four in the bricks. Four. Ten is poor. What's a four? It had no flavor whatsoever. So here I have a, just spent some good dollar for something that is just water. Or uh, a lot of times you'll see in households where the wife says, we're going to be a little more conscious, we're going to start eating organic, and then the husband's saying, well, this food's so flavorless, right? And a lot of times it's just the lack of nutrition in the soil. Even though it's been grown without chemicals, it, it's, it's still nutritionally uh, suspect. And uh, good nutrition leads to healthy things, period, right? Or that's the ecosystem, the animals, or ourselves as a society, right? So the bricks is just an indicator. So what I saw was uh, by the mineralization, 
I saw the BRICS numbers jump dramatically in fruit and apples. And, uh, you know, there's some things that don't have more BRICS, like, you know, salary really doesn't have a BRICS reading, right? Uh, uh, tomatoes, the Japanese will come to Ontario Food Terminal, and if the tomatoes aren't six or better, they won't purchase due to the fact they know it won't last the ship ride from here to Japan where you lose a lot of the produce that was in the containers. So. Mm -hmm. And the flavor, like, you know, like uh, the cherry trees when I lived in Scarborough, the wild cherry tree produced, you know, small cherry but super flavorful. And my bricks levels were 16 and 24. And I couldn't find anything over 10 in the organic section. So, and, so and they go from 10 to 16 as I walk into the moon. Wow. So you could, you when you have a bricks counter, you can go and pull anything off the shelf and check well, it? Well, yeah, there was a big movement for a while where housewives were going in into the fruit sections and grabbing an apple or grabbing an orange and bricks in it and then saying to the produce manager, this is terrible quality. I'm not going to shop here until you guys pick it up. So now you get some purchasers, they'll have the bricks meter with them and I'll just do a random little check on randomly on some of the load to see mm -hmm. what quality is it. The old grandmas and, and the smart moms, they can do it a lot of times by weight. Because when you have high bricks in your hand, what has more weight, although on the scale it's not any heavier, but there's a, a, a weight there, like it's in the uh, quantum world, but we, we, we can feel it, or you can train people to feel it. Grandmas were always notorious for taking down the little pyramid piles of apples and oranges and grapefruits in the stores. And a produce guy who just stack at would freak out, but they'd be weighing them up. They'd be going, you see them, they'd do that, and then they place it, and then they do it. And, and I just suggested to everybody, try it. Go go, go in a store and, and then find an apple that feels heavier and buy one that doesn't and take a bite out of each. And you'll notice the one that was heavier it has more flavor. And, uh, yeah. and what gives food flavor? You know, Why is it there's all the berries in the north where all this volcanic and sedimentary history is and then you go you know you go to mid-america and you don't find berries right you know you have to bring them they're not there naturally right so and what i noticed with your mineralization too you're going to kick the krebs cycle in the soil active and the krebs cycle is behind vitamin c or vitamin c production in the soil krebs k-r-e-b-s you know they talk about it in blood work too right you know or they're not there's actually vitamin C uh, uh, sort of essence in your bloodstream and we all know with the COVID thing right now high doses of vitamin C preferably on the ascorbic side because it's buffering rather than the citric side which is acidic so even though it's an acid this makes it very confusing I was so confused reading oh it's it's an acid but it's buffering so it's alkalizing like well, yeah, so that, you know the acid and the alkaline world are all dancing in between each other like two partners on a dance floor, you know. You, know, you just, uh, just got to have the conditions right for that flexibility. And that comes again in flavor, nutritional quality, right? Uh, you know, you don't have to eat as much to get your shot of vitamin C. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, orange juices these days, you see calcium added, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do juices, I you know, recommend to everyone not from concentrate because the concentrate concentrated stuff is hard for the body to digest you're getting quenched with a flavor and it's a liquid but your body's saying well, i'm having a hard time mm -hmm. comprehending what you just gave me so why don't you just pee it out and sweat it out and we'll talk about it tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> and you're always paying ketchup if you're not you know nutritionally aware and uh yeah so the only problem, the only downside with all this is your, your wildlife is going to tune in to that there's better quality there. So you have to be, this is where raised beds are good because you can control some of the animals from foraging on your garden plot when you're not there. And, and also <clears throat> makes your uh, harvesting and planting a little easier. You're standing up as opposed to bending over. Especially when we get on at our age, you know, to be down on your knees for a while can be a challenge to get back up. Right? But if you're standing up already, it's not... It's not the same. And you can control the soils. And so you want to grow pumpkins or you want to grow celery or carrots. You know, you have to adapt the soil terrain for them. You know, and, and we used to see, like, you know, through the years, I saw farmers, you know, with humongous 
uh, uh, dacons and, 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 and uh, even radishes, you know, you get radishes like small baseballs, like the small hardball, right, as opposed to just a dot. And, uh, you know, that's all. Now, now you're getting more yield off that little space. So, you know, right now at farming, it's all about making the fields bigger, 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 rather than let's condense them a little, put up a, a swale in there with a, some forest to regulate the water table and then also create some organic matter when the season goes to sleep and the leaves blow across your field and get pre-digested by the winter. And, uh, and again, you throw minerals down. I like to throw the minerals in the forest uh, in the spring as it's just waking up. So you've got all that leaf mulch from last year. So then when you throw the mineral and it rains, it starts to percolate through the leaves, stimulates the fungi and the mycorrhiza and all the actinomyces that pre-digest all the cellulose in a leaf and turn it into organic matter. And people don't realize leaves too are full of soap, saponins, right? So, you know, there's cleansing qualities to a forest dropping its own leaves and giving itself a little spring bath and a fall wash. So what happens when you remineralize a forest? Well, you see accelerated uh, canopy in going on, like, you know, much more foliage above, which now allows the sun from overcooking the soil because you're shading the sun's rays. But the photosynthesis is being reacted by the, by the leaf uh, pattern itself. It's absorbing that light. And then that's creating biomass below, you know, that has above so below expression. Like, you know, if you carefully pull a tree out, what you see above, you're going to see in a root pattern below. Or when you see a tree that doesn't grow uniformly, usually it's run into some type of obstruction. Obstruction is the root system wanted to develop over there. It wasn't friendly. So it said, okay, I'm going to just divert. I'm going to take the other lane tonight and uh, rather than struggle to try and get through there. But when, when, we, when we start to use the minerals, there's energetic patterns here because all the platonic solids are in the rock kingdom if you use the right rocks. So the, that's known in, in uh, you know, modern day alchemy as, you know, foundational to all life is, is fortified and nourished by that principle. Even the planet itself, we look at the center of the planet, it's a dodeca, dodecahedron, right? Which is a, a soccer ball blown up. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then it ripples out and becomes other things and shapes. And, you know, some minerals are striated, some are diamond patterned, you know, some are hexagonal patterned, some are straight lines, uh, some are blocks. So this all starts to create if you look at all those shapes and you throw it in a jar, you can see where soil aggregation comes from. So that soil now is breathing. It allows absorption and allows gases to leave. And when it dries up, it starts to clump up. It doesn't become hard pan, which we see a lot in chemical fertilizer. The soil collapses because we, the chemicals have burned all the, the living matter out of the profile. And so we lose our water holding capacity and nutrient uh, um, exchange. Again, carbon's the key. Carbon is the magical matrix. So you want to put as much carbon as you can into the soil. Well, you want to have make sure you have a healthy carbon, yeah, and uh, you know you've got to have again the minerals in there as well for 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 different uh, for different reactions. You know. So Before you just mentioned um, carbon from outer space. Yeah, shungite. Shungite. Oh, shungite. shungite. Oh, and is that it's that's carbon magnetic too? Oh uh, no, no, it's, it's not neutral. neutral. Oh. Mm -hmm. true, yeah. okay. But it, it, because it's carbon, it has an affinity with radiation. These are some rough pieces of shungite. We're just throwing them in here. Got a little bit more. So yeah, this is a. Uh, there's. It's interesting where this deposit is. It it um, it entered the earth to. To. Uh, and a half billion years ago, it smacked into the earth. But prior to that, the earth was just a liquid solution. And then the first bacteria showed up after the carbon showed up. We know carbon's, carbon's the matrix, right? We, we see it. Uh, if I was to vaporize you and all that dust, we go in there, there's one little drop of carbon. And what's nice about this carbon, too, it has the full arena in it, which is uh, a 60 phase soccer ball. 60-faced. And Buckminster Fuller was the one that, the geodesic dome. Mm. Yeah. The buckyball, what they call it, the buckyball. Which is now in a lot of uh, all the clothes that, uh, you know, you sweat, but it doesn't smell. Uh, and water wicks out of it. You, 
you don't get the sweat ration, even though you're working out and the water's leaving your body, it's actually evaporating out of the, the very thing that's clothing you as well. And uh, the Russians uh, painted uh, during the Cold War the submarines with it, which made it undetectable to sonar and radar. And uh, the Americans were kind of peaking because the Russians kind of had them. They, they could be right beside them and they not even know it. But then the, the, the Americans got smart and they figured, what engine? And it's interesting, during the wars, all the engines and the submarines and the planes were all wars' worst engines, which have a certain hum. And so they were listening to that hum in the water, and that's how they were able to track them. But, uh, yeah, so it's on all the stealth bombers now, all that, uh, those drones are all coated with uh, uh, high carbon. Or the Batman car, I think it was the Val Kimner Batman movie, had that black, flat, black car. That was painted with the Shanghai. And, uh, yeah. So we're in a, a real world with radiation right now, radio waves. So the Shanghai's good for softening some of that up. Like it's not eliminating it, but it's taking the edge out of the wave. So it's like static on the radio. Now we got a clean signal. Even though we still got a signal, but we're not being disturbed by it the same way. So that's why I'm a big proponent of uh, you know, coding rooms, at least a bedroom, do your bedroom, make it, have a safe bunker somewhere in the house, that could be your office, but the bed is so important, we sleep a third of our lives, so it's so important to have the bedroom really comfortable, and, and the ladies are the first ones that, you know, say it, something's not right, and, you know, as men, we say, what are you doing, I don't feel anything, right, but, you know, you start looking into it, and there's a lot of us guys waking up to the right, and all looking at feminine sensitivities, and Becoming a little more feminine too. Uh, I've got a shanghai behind you. You got, got a shanghai behind you? Yeah. Like how far? Behind your back. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is a, a piece of, of a, a shanghai sphere. So this has been shaped into a sphere. It doesn't. It, it's a it's a uniform deposit, but it it is uh, interesting. This is thirty three percent carbon on its own, and all the elements of the periodic table in there at really um, low numbers. So it has an affinity with the universal matrix, like that, that elemental spectrum of, of what we know as uh, the elementals of the geological world, right? The different, you know, calcium, potassium, silica, iron, you know, all, all the radioactive stuff, the non-radioactive, and, and uh, yeah. And then there's the elite shungite. When they got into the deposit, they came into a zone that looked just like an eye, like your iris in the eye, but it was a caramel color. So the Russians took it out, got it in the labs, and there's probably like over 80 scientific journals on how it restructures water. And all the soldiers during the wars in Russia were all had little pieces of this in their canteens. And they weren't getting the same uh, fevers and stuff stuck in the trenches that the other guys were going, uh, getting in other, other uh, uh, people fighting the same war, right? And there's a great story about a Russian oligarch uh, woman she kept getting pregnant and avoiding. And one day, this old grubby guy shows up in the courtyard. And I've got to talk to the queen, right? And the, the guards are trying to push him out. The queen sees him, said, let him in, let him in. He gave her a, pit, a piece of shungite, and she had uh, six kids after that. And he ruled Russia, I think, 300 years or something, as a family, in, 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 a, in a, not a tyrancy uh, ruling. It was a very uh, uh, copacetic uh, ruling leader, right? Because we've had a lot of history. We've had leaders that were good for the uh, envi uh, environment and community and other leaders that were just power mongers and wanted to conquer everybody and enslave everybody. So yeah, so I highly recommend the, the, you know, having a piece of Shanghai. This piece, they, they took a shot of the moon and they just etched out the uh, landscape of the moon onto the stone. So, so you've got the little dark side of the moon. So it's that's that crater that they're all going to on the dark side that stays loaded with all kinds of... That's the next thing they're going to be mining, the asteroids and the moon. And China, looks like China, China, China's in there. Like they've sent vehicles already and dropped down. But they, they don't know what's in there yet. But they know there's beneficial. And there's some meteorite or asteroid that they say there's enough gold in there to make gold worthless. Right? So you got to remember, the Earth was bombarded at one time by all these things coming from outer space. So people don't realize nickel is from outer space. It grew here. And a lot of the elements are like that. It's like the Earth 
we don't talk about traditional studies, the big mama, man. You know, she got incubated by celestial things and created this beautiful diversity we call planet Earth, right? So we need to help. We need to help the planet again. And uh, when we heal the planet, we heal ourselves because a lot of the disorder of modern day will leave. But we have to get back on the, the, the straight path, right? The path of creation rather than just usury and destruction. And the planet's going to take stuff anyway. Like, you know, it's the history of the planet. It moves around. But I'm a firm believer if, 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 we, if we nourish... Uh, that's a, that's a, a heron, by the way, that was just squawking there. If we nourish the environment, we heal ourselves. And a lot of the worries of the world disappear. A lot of people are worrying because the nerves are, are upset. They're not, no insulation. They're all arcing, cross-stocking. Your signal's being broke up. And uh, so body, body parts get you know, disrupted by, where's my, I need my shot of energy today. Where is it, right? So that's where movement helps. You know, a lot of yoga, and stretching, breathing, all little things that, uh, that uh, we are hardwired for that we've forgotten how to do in our busyness. Chasing the dollar. There's nothing wrong with the dollar, but uh, you can make all the money in the world, but you don't have your house, you, you have no wealth. And, uh, and I know personally myself, I, I've healed myself through the ages of a lot of modern day problems and just through good nutritional selection and, and nourishing the land. And because these things have energies, when you handle them personally, you are getting touched as well by the energy in the stone. Right? So, it's a little bit of a healing going on. And, and, and you can intentionalize too, like uh, when you're holding rock dust in your hand, put a good thought, nourishment thought, healing thought, and you throw it out. Now you've, you've, uh, you've woke up the chip, you've programmed it. And, uh, you know, we all, we're all walking chips ourselves, right? Multi-dimensional beings. Covering what we were talking about, Trevor. So, no, but if we're gonna, <clears throat> it was a real sort of non sequitur, but if we're gonna have um, Hercules planes full of rock dust flying over forests in springtime, and we have a couple of people with shovels and uh, good, uh, uh, you know, seatbelt kind of material, keeping them locked on the plane with the shovels, though, so that they shovel the rock dust so that it flies out of the back of the plane and covers the forest. My question is, do we get them to think positive thoughts of healing while they're doing that? Yeah, they could go, like, go through the pile. They could go through the pile, touch it with their hands, and then shovel it out. Or, uh, you know, they have spreaders, PTO spreaders, that you just could be loaded up, you know, and, and broadcast it on a spinner plate out uniformly. And, uh, you know, people would have to hopper that full again or something. Uh, or, so know. when they feel the hopper, they can touch it and yeah, have yeah, the positive yeah, thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's important to have the positive thoughts when you're... Oh, it, it's definitely like, you know, thoughts are, are things, right? Be careful what you think. You might manifest something you don't want. So sometimes you... I remember meeting an old gal say, you got to get rid of your stinking thinking to heal. Because we can back ourselves in the corner all the time, right? And you, get, you, you alone can rise up out of it all. But we're, we're sort of brought up to believe that somebody's going to save us. <laughs> or, you know, I'll go do, do this workshop and I'll get healed, but I'm not going to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's in the name, workshop. Yeah. Oh, yeah.